Jim, I'll start with you. Uh, Chairman Powell made a mistake today? Uh, I don't necessarily know if he made a mistake. I'm not sure he had a lot. Of, I think the market looks at it that way. But I think I'm not sure he had a lot of choice. Look, this month we have saw the, the rate of core consumer price inflation and the rate of core producer price inflation both accelerate from the month before and both are near their highest levels of the entire recovery. Wage inflation for the second month in a row year on year is above 3 percent. And who knows, two weeks from now it could even go up again. So I, I get where the Fed is coming from. Um, I, I really do. I think the central problem is not that uh, we, we've had overheat issues. We've had those all year. It's just that we had a good economy to offset them. This is the first time in the recovery that we have had worries, in my view, about stag and inflation simultaneously. And when you have a stagflation mindset in the stock market, it's a tough path for the bull. You, what we got is fears, escalating fears of recession, but at the same time, we're still dealing with overheat pressures, legitimately so. And I think we're going to have to kill off concerns about inflation, and that probably means a deeper correction and even weaker economic growth before this bull can, can continue. Not, not very optimistic. Jack Ablin, bottom line, does today's decision change the outlook for stocks into the end of the year and 2019? No, I think it's part of the longer term path. Uh, you know, what Guy was saying is right. I think that, you know, the investors in this market nowadays are on a, uh, sh have champagne tastes. And unfortunately, the central banks are on a beer budget. Uh, one of the things I worry about is that, you know, while certainly you've got a Federal Reserve that have, has tightened for the last few years, um, we, we still have a, roughly a $14.5 trillion dollar uh, quantitative easing stockpile built up, uh, and yet we still have, you know, seven and a half trillion dollars of bonds worldwide with negative yields. So if we do start to slip, uh, I'm afraid that, you know, uh, a lot of the investors are going to be looking for another bailout, uh, and the central banks just don't have the wherewithal to do that. So I believe, just like uh, Powell, I think Draghi and others need to start, you know, really ramping up their, their uh, uh, you know, stockpile to, to be able to address the next downturn if we have one. Jim, just quickly, we were talking about the attractiveness of uh, emerging markets just before the break. Uh, in light of a perhaps slightly less dovish Fed than expected and, and uh, the dollar recovering intraday, what, what's your take on that? You know, I, I, I like the emerging markets right now. I, I, I think it's amazing uh, and, and it's somewhat surprising that they have outperformed here in a in a more than 10 percent correction in the U.S. stock market. They, they've gone down only about half as much, and they've actually been a market performer now for three years. And I, I kind of I, I think that they might continue. There's, there's other favorable things surrounding them, including valuations in a, a completely washed out marketplace uh, where there's only hardy souls left that own them. Uh, and I, I kind of think that they're going to lead the rest mm -hmm. of the way in in the balance of this bull. Um, if we have a bear market, I, I don't want to be hanging out. But otherwise, I think they're a good bet right now.